What is going on my beautiful LARPers and LARPettes? Today we're going to go over the Sig Sauer Rattler LT or the Rattler Lite. And I'm going to be directly comparing it to the Sig Rattler, the original Rattler right here in front of me. The Rattler series has been around for quite a while and I'm so glad that uh, Sig is uh, still continuing on with the Rattler legacy with this Rattler LT. Now before I get into this video, what is my relationship with Sig Sauer? Sig does send me out firearms for review on loan. They do not give them to me. I do have a certain amount of time before I have to purchase them um, or I could just send them back if I don't want them or and I'm not doing any more review process with it anymore. Um, with that said, I did purchase this one a long time ago before I even had this relationship with SIG. So this Rattler here, I did purchase this one. I have not purchased. So starting off at the front here, you get your three prong flash hider. Um, it is specifically made for these SIG Sour suppressors. And unfortunately, I never get to take these off because I don't have the patience to uh, put this in boiling water for 30 minutes and sit there and then take it off after. So at this point in time, I still have not uh, taken off one of these on my own because they are a pain in the ass. The three prong is still the same type of three prong. Well, not the same type. Well, let me let me reframe, retract there. This is also a three prong on here, but this is not threaded for any type of suppressor. So if you want to suppress the original Rattler, you do have to take this off and put a whole new uh, muzzle device on there to suppress it. This one, you don't. Moving on back from the muzzle, this Rattler is equipped with a 300 blackout, six and a half inch barrel, as opposed to the original Rattler here came with a five and a half inch barrel. So you get a whole inch on this uh, Rattler LT here. And if you ask a lot of women out there, that whole inch is a huge difference. You also get the same exact two position setting uh, knob up here for your piston. And moving on to the rail, you have a very slim down rail on the Rattler LT compared to the original Rattler right here, which has a like squared out, uh, not square, rectangular profiling of that rail there. Also another thing on this LT rail is you're getting a lot more options for M-Lock all the way around. So on the original Rattler you have two on the left, two M-Lock on the right, two M-Lock at the bottom. This one you have three M-Lock slots on the right, three M-Lock slots on the left, and then two at the bottom. But you also get, get some at the edges here. So you have three there and three there. So more options in terms of uh, putting accessories on here. The upper receiver, the design of it, you're gonna see quite a bit of a difference here. So it is more skeletonized at the top or you got some windows cut out at the top of there. So on the Rattler, original Rattler, you don't have any on the top of the receiver. And you also have a more uh, squared out design when it comes to the cuts that are out on the receiver itself. This one, you have those, um, windowed cuts at the top then you have more of a like rounded indentation compared to like that squared uh, look that you get on the original Rattler. You get the same exact dust cover, you get the same, pretty much the same exact uh, brass deflector right there, and the same uh, indentations for your collapsible, collapsible, collapsible brace or stock, whatever you're gonna put on there. So really, really nice design on this LT here. Not saying that the Rattler was a uh, worse design. I actually prefer those, uh, more sharper cuts on the receiver of the Rattler. It makes them look more futuristic compared to the uh, LT version here. Now moving on down to the lower receiver, you're going to see quite a bit of a difference between this lower receiver and the uh, original Rattler there. So on this Rattler LT, you have a uh, bolt hold open or bolt lock and also a bolt release on the right side. So you have full ambidextrous controls on this guy in terms of uh, putting that bolt back and dropping that bolt home whenever you want. So you got the paddle and you got that release on the right side. You do not have that option on here. So you're only limited to the left side of this rifle for locking that bolt back to the rear or dropping that bolt home. Really, really like this. This is one of my favorite things about the whole, uh, what is it, the, uh, not the Virtus, the uh, Spear series. So I like that they add this lever here. Um, a lot of people think it's a 
awkward position up there, but it's not really uh, bothersome for me. So I can lock that back easily and drop the bolt super fast. Makes for extremely fast reloads. You get the same exact mag release on both of these as well as the ambidextrous side is the same exact. The mag wells are, yeah, I think they're exactly the same on both of these here. Trigger guards are exactly the same. Grips are exactly the same. The safety selectors are exactly the same. And uh, I'm gonna get into another difference here. The triggers are a little bit different. On this one here, you have like this curved skeletonized type trigger. On this one here, it just looks like a normal uh, mil spec trigger. This one is a lot better. I mean, it feels more like a uh, competition style trigger, but it's not extremely light. So very spa fast splits on this. And I think this is the same trigger that's on the Spear LT. Um, I have to check my Spear again if it's the same trigger, but I think it's uh, the same trigger that they're uh, using now on all the other newer MCXs. And lastly, you got your QD attachment points. Your QD attachment points on the rear of this Rattler LT are metal. The ones on the original Rattler are not. They're actually integrated into the receiver itself with no metal, um, uh, no metal pieces in there. So if you do end up putting a QD attachment point on these and you wear those down, you're kind of screwed because now you're going to have to get a whole new lower receiver in order to fix that QD option or just not put a QD option on there once it wears down. On the Rattler LT, you do have those metal sleeves in there that's gonna prevent you from destroying your lower receiver. And I'm guessing that if you do end up for some reason messing these sleeves up, you can just pop those out and pop in new ones in there. And to go on the QD attachment points, not sure why they did this, but there's no Q, there's QD attachment points on the original Rattler. There's no QD attachments on the uh, new Rattler LT with this receipt or with this uh, rail here. Yeah, I guess you're just gonna have to add that option. I mean, if they're trying to shave weight on the uh, QD attachment points to make it the light version, if I'm gonna need to put a sling on there with the QD attachment points, then I'm just adding weight again with that QD attachment point. So at that point, might as well just leave them in there, right? Also forgot to mention the charging handle, but they are exactly the same on both of these, but what do you think about the new Rattler LT? Is it a huge step up from the original Rattler by adding that extra inch, giving you a slimmer rail and giving you fully ambidextrous controls as well as a different look in terms of the uh, milling that they put on here? Or is it better for you just to find a uh, normal Rattler and just stick with that? And ultimately, again, I gotta get a suppressor for these little Rattlers, but I think 300 Blackout truly shines in suppressed uh, with subsonic 300 blackout in there. So go ahead and let me know down in the comments below what you think about the Rattler LT. I really appreciate you guys. Love you all. Appreciate you all. I already said appreciate. Catch you in the next one.